So what I'm looking at is a 2008 Jaguar XKR. One thing that a lot of people don't understand is profit is made when you buy. So we got to make sure we get it at the right price. We're in a 5.5. Sold. Holy macaroni. I got to say, I do like this a lot. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. A lot of you have spoken in a recent video saying you like watching the buying videos. You'd like to see me doing more of the research and whatever. And I'm not that prepared for that today. But what I thought might be interesting is that we are due to stock up. We're quite low with stock on the forecourt. By this point, you've probably, mm, when this comes out, it could be a few weeks in time from now. Um, I'm making a decision. We're going up market. Not so much that I want to go up market, but I want to go up margin because I'm not making the money I want to make, if at all, sometimes. So I am trying to buy stuff with bigger margins in and that's what we're going to try and concentrate on, which means it's riskier stuff as well. That's that's where the margins come in from taking the risk. I don't gamble, I don't bet on sports, I don't do anything else, but I guess I do with cars, try and make a calculated risk. But yeah, so today we're going to try and buy some risky stuff. Risky stuff? Risky stuff, basically is what I'm trying to say. So this video, Hopefully we will get it um, because I love these things. And I really want, this also kind of plays into me being able to buy stuff that I'm passionate about, which hopefully will come across on the channel, but also then plays against like the number one rule when it comes to car sales, don't buy stuff that you like. But you know, that can't always be right. Anyway, so what I'm looking at is a 2008 Jaguar XKR. It's the 4.2, uh, but it's the supercharged version. So it's pretty much identical to what we had before, although that may have been a 56 plate or 2007 or something. This is a 2008. It's in black. It's got the silver alloys. Um, it looks very well indeed. And of course, it's got the kind of bonnet vents and whatever. Um, I really like these cars, especially with that. Just, they're just good, good cars. And I think it'll be, I mean, the other one was like nippy, but not incredibly fast. But I think this being the supercharged one, never had one before, but do want to try it. A few little bits that look a bit tatty inside. But most importantly is the margin. It's gonna want a good clean up, but again, that's sometimes that's where you add value. One thing, I am still planning to like do a bit of a kind of getting into car sales guide type thing, but it doesn't matter whether it's car sales, buying houses, buying lollipops and selling them for all I care. One thing that a lot of people don't understand is profit is made when you buy, not when you sell. Sounds counterintuitive because when you sell is when you get the money and the profit. Basically, you can't buy a car overpriced polish some profit into it and sell it for more than it's worth. You can't, you have to buy it at the right price and then you can work your magic on making your profit however you do that. So profit's made when you buy, not when you sell. So we gotta make sure we get it at the right price. Things can be fixed, but if you get it at the right price, then there is potential. So it tells me that uh, the cap clean, I think, is cap clean is seven and a half thousand. Well, it's not really that clean, but bids may be strong. I think I'm gonna to bid to about 7,600 uh, with the hopes of that the fees and everything, it'll be about eight grand in, because I think, not that there's many of them about to look at, I don't expect I've still got my auto trader up. It won't bring up this because of the age, you can't just get kind of like valuations on auto trader, anything over 15 years old, it doesn't value. So, I've looked at what the other ones are doing and private sale ones on slightly less miles, maybe 10,000 less miles, are doing about 14 grand. I think this is about 12. It's a bit of a gamble I'm gonna take, but from a dealership, I think we'd be okay. So if I got it for eight, we'd have four grand in it, spend a little bit on it. You know, if we've got two and a half, you know, at the end, two grand net maybe, then, you know, that might help pay the uh, wages. That's prices, valuations and everything. But let's do a vehicle score because that is the one thing I haven't done in my prep of checking this thing out so far. So our reg is Yankee Charlie 58 Tango X-Ray Alpha. See what it says, we wanna check out our MOT history being Jaguar, could be a bit rusty, you never know. Um, but it says 687 out of 999, not bad. Uh, I want the best ULES compliant as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is ridiculous. It's got an 88% MOT pass rate. The average for one of these is 541 out of 999. Um, bad bits, vehicles over 10 years old, vehicles above 8,000 miles. So to me, that means it's pretty good because we know those bits anyway and we're still interested in it. Let's look at the MOT history. 88% uh, says it's amazing. Advisory, 
on the last FOT, front subframe corroded but not seriously weakened, rear subframe damaged but not seriously weakened. That will obviously put a lot of people off, but we may, I don't know what a, how big of a job it is to do a front subframe on one of these. If you needed one, we might just better clean it up and kind of treat it. So, you know, I won't panic too much. As I said, you've got to take some risks uh, if you want to try and earn the big bucks. Um, what else can we look at? Let's have a look at vehicle details and performance. So we know it's a 4.2, it's petrol. Um, it says on there 86,000 miles last it was seen. That's fair enough because it says 87 now. Yearly mileage was a bit up and down, didn't get much use in 2014 or 15. But the mileage tracker, which is always worth checking, shows it's always going up or doing the same. So we know that it's unlikely it's being clocked. Let's tap to reveal performance figures. 409 horsepower, and I happen to know that's what? At least 100 horsepower more than the non-supercharged one. It is 735 pounds a year tax, which is upsetting. Now, I've already done a history check on this, but if you are spending your hard-earned cash on this, you need to do a history check to make sure this car hasn't got any hidden history that you want to know about before you hand over your hard-earned cash. So I recommend doing the ultimate plus report with vehicle score of £11.97. Use my code SHIFTINGMELT20. It'll make it £9.58, I believe, and it will check everything from whether that car was used as a taxi. I'd be surprised. Whether it was an ex-police car, again, I'd be surprised. But whether it's been written off, whether it's been seen at a salvage yard, even if it hasn't got a marker against it, many other things that you're going to want to know about if you're buying it privately whether it's still got finance on it because someone may have bought it with finance and not told you and then the bailiffs come knocking on your door so you need to do one of these checks because it'll save you loads of money i'm fairly happy with this we will be coming up to it in what lot number are we on ah, okay we're on lot number 15 and it is lot number 18 so we will join you when we are getting our bids in tell you what i've got a proxy bid on on this of 7,600. Now, I don't know. I have in the past said that I think proxy bids help because it instantly kind of bids over someone else. As soon as they put a bid in, it puts your proxy bid straight in. And I wonder if that sometimes helps rather than waiting a few seconds until I bid. You know, for the sake of fun and everyone saying that I'll get ripped off with proxy bids as well because the auctioneer will run me up which to be fair, they're legally allowed to do to get you up to the reserve price, not go any further, that would be very naughty. We'll remove that proxy bid, Ooh. and then do it the old fashioned way, manually. Right, here we go. Uh, it's still telling me my proxy bid is applied, which it shouldn't be. Look, 20 inch wheels. Wow, how cheap is that, 46, 46, 47, 48, 49, 5, 5 bid 1, 2, 5, 2 bid, 5 to the bid, 5 to the bid, 5 to the bid, 5 to the bid, 5 to Three, We're in a 5-5. Five, five. Five, 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 six, seven, eight, five, six, six, three. Sold for 6,500, 1,100 pounds under what I was willing to pay for it. So maybe not doing proxy bids does work so that's good news i'm really excited to try that out and it's only down at bridgewater so we might even be able to pick that up later on today if not tomorrow so we'll see you when we are arriving at bca bridgewater to pick up our jag xkr <laughs> Right, let's see if we can spot our XKR first. It looked to be in quite good condition, but needs a bit of titivating, a bit of polishing up and whatnot. I think I was trying to bid on that green one, but I wasn't sure if I'd like the green or not, because it's almost like black on that Range Rover Sport, but it's okay, it didn't blow me away, to be honest. There she is. There she is, look at that. Yeah. 
Here we are. I said we didn't have a spare key, but it has a Keyblade key. Does it look all right? Anything I need to know about? The fact that it's kissing this Hyundai. Yeah, it's unlocking. Looks like the door trim could do with being fitted properly. Never had one of these. Supercharged before, so be interesting. Will it start? Ooh. Very refined. Fuel level low, not a surprise, but it does say 119 miles, but is that range three miles? So we're going straight to the petrol station. Someone in the comments said the other day it's turning into Barrow's V8 motors. That's fine by me. How can you argue with that? We've got a service history book, which was okay, I think. Does our TV system work? It's interesting. Don't remember that. So we don't seem to have our sort of display screen, which would show us all of our air conditioning controls and everything as well. Let's have a look at the report for this and see if it said anything about that. It says near side brake light illuminates. But that's it, it doesn't say anything about interior stuff. But then on the essential report, which is what we've got, it doesn't say anything about radio stuff. So we'll have to plug it in and find out. I wonder if that's got something to do with the door being off. I wonder if it's gonna say like it's got a body control module or something playing up. Well, that works. That's problem number one. But, you know, it might not be a drastic one. Can you reach in there and pop the bonnet? We'll have a look under there. Oh, it's going to open this way, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. 4.2 V8, supercharged. Got a very random... Oh, that is sh literally shocking. Would be shocking because... Pass me that here, I'll show you. Look at that for an electrical connection for something. Oh, I wonder if they, is there something over there as well? I wonder if they've fitted like Xenon headlights or something. We know this runs now. If you hop in this, Toby, you know, look at the swirl marks on it and put it around. I will take this in to say goodbye. How'd it feel driving it around the car park, Topes? It felt right. I wasn't expecting the uh, accelerator to be that sensitive. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> Spun over a little bit. <laughs> it says we've got zero miles range now. Which is good, because we don't have a full mile to go, but... Holy macaroni! That is a completely different beast than the non-supercharged one. Woo! This is one of those types of cars where, oh God, if, you know, down there, where it's a bit like if you drive a Cayman S without having driven a 911 Carrera S, you think, oh, I don't really see how it could be that much better, really. So like one of these in a 4.2 naturally aspirated V8, you're like, oh, you know, I'm sure the, the supercharged is a bit faster, but you know, this is nice and civilized and it still sounds good and whatever. And then you actually drive the supercharged or the 911 and you're like, it's a completely different machine. It all makes sense now. All right then. They're really sensitive about pressing on the brake, these things, for some reason. I am pressing brake. Oh, it's a bit lurchy, isn't it? Oh. 
This is for your Asbo granddads. <laughs> the thing is, it's got loads of power. It obviously wants to spin up, but it's also got very soft suspension. So rather than sliding out, it kind of like... You don't really get a lot of supercharger noise, but maybe we'll get it a bit higher in the revs. Oh, it flashes its lights when you blip down the throttle. That's... What's that about? Maybe not. Oh, we definitely got some warped front discs. Oh, maybe it's just picking up on these shadows from the trees and it's making the lights come on and off. Let's put them to off for a minute. Pretty good. This is where I remember why I like the XK, because it's like really soft and comfortable. You can still just kind of cruise around in it like your everyday car. You may as well be in a Range Rover, that's how soft it is. But you can also make, you know, Larry V8 noises. Unlike the RS5 that we've got, and probably that M3 that we've got back at the garage as well, which would be very firm, very taut, bouncy and kind of very sporty. This is just like... It's like having a power boat. You can put a lot of power down and it kind of like lifts the front end as you're going across the waves and you let off and it warbles back into the water. Not speaking from experience, because I've never driven a boat in my life, but that's what I imagine it to be like. I like the fact that 25 quid got 70 miles worth of range. <laughs> That's savage. It says it's averaging 19.2 miles per gallon. That's not why you buy a car like this, I suppose, is it? So you can... definitely want some front discs they're quite warped I gotta say I do like this a lot I wish I had a bit more supercharger noise I wish the radio thing worked I wish it wasn't broken on the seat thing but you know that's the way it goes I still think we nicked this because I think it was about seven grand all in all like what? I wonder how many horsepower it is I have to have a look the I think the normal 4.2 naturally aspirate is about 300 horsepower I reckon this Oh, we did look, didn't we? 408 horsepower, we looked on the vehicle score. Yeah. It's definitely not a slouch. For the money, what a car. I mean, you can't have it for that money because I'm going to try and sell it for 12 grand, but, you know, we'll also have to fix it up a little bit. I mean, part of the kind of warbly... boatiness about it. it might be that it wants some tracking or alignment or something because it kind of did you feel it pull to the left then when I let off not really good news is I mean the supercharger is working it's not overheating it sounds awesome but it doesn't sound like it's had some ridiculous aftermarket exhaust on it just need to figure out what's going on with that screen sort a couple of little bits of trim out and we've got a very very nice Grand Tourer. I think it would come under the class as a Grand Tourer. So, I think it's also going to want an aircon regas, but then I can't see what's happening to know whether what temperature it's actually on or whatever. As I say, it would normally be on here. We don't seem to have any radio either. So, I'm hoping that's just a fuse that powers the stereo, our Meridian sound, sound system and whatever else. I don't think the other one... Did the normally aspirated one have flappy paddles? I don't think it did. It might have done. Either way. So, we'll leave it there. I'll keep driving back like a hooligan, but you don't need to keep watching that. Then we'll get this through the workshop, figure out what's going on with the bits and pieces. We'll get it cleaned up. Then we'll get Toby to do some cinematics. And then we'll talk about how much it cost me and how much I'm hoping to make. We'll see you then.
Right, so there we have it. Our Jag XKR is finally sorted. The biggest holdup was getting the head unit working. If you remember, the head unit wouldn't work. We just couldn't get anything on the screen. We tried changing the DVD unit, which does the sat nav and everything, because that was kind of clicking and whirring away, and it sounded like it was doing weird things. Uh, that was about £20, didn't actually fix it. We sent it back, so we haven't spent any money on that. What it turned out to be was an amplifier unit, which, bizarrely, being a Jaguar, we could only get in America. So it is $445 posted, which is about 367 quid, I think, is what we've got on our dealer kit spreadsheet for this. But that has solved that problem. I think we were missing a door cap as well, actually, weren't we? So we've got another one of those. Uh, we had Mike from MW Dents come out and remove some dents on it, or a dent. I can't even remember exactly what, but he charged just £45 for that. Yeah, it now drives absolutely spot on, sat nav and everything, and radio is all working as it should. So the one thing I think in all of that we forgot to do was to get a new key case. Although, to be fair, if I was to just take the sellotape off, I think the key's okay. It's just missing the internal blade, so we need a new blade and get one of those cut to match the spare that we've got but that can be sorted fairly quickly so let's have a talk about the figures on this so we bought it for six thousand eight hundred and ninety seven pounds as i say we spent 367 pounds on the radio system 45 pounds on the paintless dent removal so it stands us at £7,309 and we've currently got it up for £11,995 with a lot of interest. So we've got a very healthy margin in this, what, about £4,700, something along those lines. Hopefully this won't be here for too much longer, otherwise I'll be tempted to keep it. So that is it for this video. This is normally where I would say make sure you subscribe to the channel because when we hit 75,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a £2,000 Tag Heuer watch completely free. But we've reached 75000 now, so keep a look out on my YouTube community and there will be a post where I'll be telling you how you need to enter in order to win that because I thought I could just simply pick one of my subscribers, but it turns out not everyone's publicly subscribed. A lot of people miss out, so we are doing it this way. So make sure you check out my YouTube community posts and you'll just need to comment one word. It will all be there explaining how you do it and you could win that watch. That aside, if you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up, that would really help me out. That will be it this time. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.